Honourable Minister Jerry Brownlee. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> can I say at the outset of my comments that I've known Peter Dunn for the better part of almost 50 years, and I know him to be an honourable person, and I accept that when he says that he had an inexplicable uh, moment or moments in his life that have led to this, uh, that he does so from a genuine perspective. Yeah. Mr Speaker, it gives me no particular pleasure to speak in this debate. But I think when you look at, listen to the speech that we just heard, and listen to the speech of the Speaker uh, from the Green Party, and for that matter, the small bits that I picked up from the leader of the Labour Party, there seems to be uh, a desire here to suggest that there is something out there that the public is not being told about. I want to make it very clear, I want to make it very clear to this House that there was absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing in the speech by Winston Peters today that is not already in the public arena. And in the 1980s, that sort of speech would have been a sensation because the reach of the media, the reach of the public to information was so much limited. But now, of course, with all of that out there, brought into New Zealand first as if it was some pile of special information delivered to Winston Peters because he's the only man in Parliament who can make something of it, is actually quite plain and quite uh, normal and quite well known by everyone. And I say to Winston Peters members, uh, the, member, the, the leader of their party might like to say that New Zealand First members make a habit in this House of, cre cre of keeping the place honest. They also make a habit of not sticking around too long because in the time that New Zealand First has been here, they've burned off as, almost as many MPs as any other party in here during that time. Right. And there is no reason to believe that the situation next year will be any different. Mr Speaker, a couple of things here are, I think, are pretty relevant. Firstly, uh, when Mr Henry's report was released last week, the last paragraph in that report really says it all. He makes the point that uh, uh, he could not continue the investigation because Mr Dunn did not release all of the email traffic that he would have liked to look at. But he certainly leaves it very, very clear that there is nothing else to investigate. And so what this comes down to is a very, very uh, simple matter. Uh, firstly, Mr Dunn has resigned uh, because the Prime Minister made it clear if he didn't release those emails, there was no choice but for him to resign. So then this mad case being uh, persecuted by the, the Greens that he should have remained on the Security Intelligence uh, Committee falls apart because when one has lost the confidence of the Prime Minister, there is certainly no place in the country's most important security committee. Mr Speaker, the issue then becomes when do the emails between Mr Dunn and the reporter become public? And indeed, should they become public? And the question for uh, the Labour Party is, will the Labour Party insist, should there be a privileges hearing? And I think there's actually a big doubt about whether there should be in the first place. Will they insist that Ms Vance's uh, emails are released to the committee and become part of the record of the committee. Because, Mr Speaker, if that's the case, then the rules for operation in this House and the long-held desire by all members to keep private communications between them as elected members and constituents and other people who come with, with information is long gone. There's no doubt about it. The only way that Mr Shearer escaped uh, the axe earlier this year over his failure to disclose his very substantial secret bank account was the fact that he, had, uh, he, had, he was able to uh, simply take a position knowing that no one could investigate any information he might have had or been in possession of that would have meant he had made a very, very big mistake. Mr Speaker, 
uh, I simply think that we need to understand that there is a lot more at stake here than just the situation relating to a minister who got himself into bad circumstances and has had to resign as a consequence. Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to make a, a few brief comments uh, on, this, on this matter, uh, Mr Speaker.